Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and in this episode we'll be doing another Tintin edition comparison, this time looking at Tintin in America. We'll be looking at the original 1932 version represented here in this facsimile edition by Casterman, as well as the redrawn and then translated into English version represented here with Tintin in America's Magnet edition from my childhood, my tattered and well-thumbed and falling apart paperback copy. I say another because the Black Island edition comparison done earlier has proven to be quite popular by our relative standards on this channel which led us to think that this might be something people enjoy as well. If you're interested in a general introduction to the adventures of Tintin's series of comics, check out our What is Tintin video linked above as well. But otherwise, let's dive into comparing the 1932 with the 1942 and 70s translation of Hergé's Tintin in America. Tintin in America was the third Tintin adventure that Hergé published, although most people have probably known it as the first, because Land of the Soviets and Congo were not redrawn and coloured by Hergé and not published in the Methuen Magnet paperbacks that made Tintin so popular worldwide. It was also one of nine adventures of Tintin that were originally published in black and white. The Shooting Star was the first Tintin originally published in colour and all of the previous ones were recoloured later, and makes for a good basis of comparison between the early and the later Hergé styles. The first thing we notice about the original is that it's substantially longer as far as page extent is concerned and this thickness difference illustrates it somewhat, although that's also because of the paper used in the facsimile edition. And this is because Tintin in America was originally a 128 page adventure as opposed to the 62 pages it was later trimmed down to. The trimming down however wasn't so much a question of deleting content as it was of compressing it. For example, the first two pages that we see in the original go from the introduction of Chicago and the mobster's ruling, to Al Capone's lecture, uh, to his gang, uh, Tintin's arrival, getting into the taxi and then being stuck in there. That's the first two pages and in the later version we see that it takes less than a page to tell that, although it keeps exactly the same beats and the panels. The two major differences is the skyline of Chicago and the representation of Capone and his gang and his lecture in two different panels have been changed. There is no skyline in the redrawn version and there's only one shot of Capone and his gang. The rest of it stays exactly the same. The one, two, three, four, five, six panels over here are represented as one, two, three, four, five, six, keeping the same angles as well as the same pictures, even though they've been redrawn. We see this throughout the first third of the book, where you can see that there are again two pages taken to get from Tintin and Snowy being trapped in the taxi to them getting on the cop's motorcycle and giving chase, all of which is represented in one page in the redrawn version. So the number of panels are the same. They just take up less space and with the clear line drawing now replacing the earlier style it, you can fit much more into the same amount of space without losing any clarity. In fact just like with the Black Island the level of detail is much higher in the smaller panels. The facsimile edition from Casterman does include four of these full page, full color panels that were included for the collected edition of this serialized comic, but were later removed for the 62 page editions. These full page panels became something of a rarity. There are some full page panels in a couple of the Tintin adventures that followed Tintin in America, but then due to the page restrictions and paper shortage, uh, they got eliminated completely. This first one is of Tintin hanging outside the police car as they speed down the streets of Chicago. The second one appears in the part of the story where Tintin is captured by the Native American tribe. The third one appears during the attempted lynching sequence and the fourth one during the capture of gangster Bobby Smiles. And these plates with the old-fashioned colours are just beautiful to look at. If there's one problem, it's just the strange placement of them. This plate, for example, comes before the sequence in which Tintin gets into the cop car and starts chasing them. This page would have been the ideal for the placement of this, because the placement would match where this scene is taking place in the story. And the same thing holds true for the other ones as well. Here is the plate of Tintin at the stake, but he hasn't been captured yet in the story. It isn't until this page that we get to where he is. Again, this would have been the perfect place to put in this image, story-wise. 
but that's probably a production thing of where they could put the color pages. It just seems to break the flow of the story just a tiny bit. But apart from the number of pages and the four color plates, there are a number of textual as well as art differences uh, between these two editions. One of the first that we notice is in Al Capone's speech right at the beginning to his gang. In the original, Al Capone refers to Tintin as the famous Belgian reporter, defining his nationality within the text. And he also mentions the fact that Tintin did a big report on the USSR and on top of that busted my takeover plan for the diamond mines in the Congo, making references to Tintin's earlier two adventures. The redrawn and rewritten version does contain the reference to the Congo, but the reference to the USSR has been removed as has been the mention of Tintin's nationality. Capone's gang over here does include one African-American character who's represented here with some racial caricatures and exaggerated features, as was unfortunately prevalent at that time. In the redrawn version, you still have something that represents a caricature, but it's a little toned down. It's maybe not as offensive or problematic as the original image was, but this character continues to be black in both versions. Of course, he never appears again. This is his only appearance, but it's interesting because this is the only black character left in the redrawn version from the original. Uh, the original actually had a couple of others. For example, later in the story when Tintin thinks he hears Snowy, who's been kidnapped, he bursts into a woman's house who's tending to her baby. And originally that woman was black as was the guard outside the petroleum and cactus bank that sprang up overnight at the Blackfoot territories, who was later replaced by a Caucasian or Hispanic looking guard. One would think that these were changed due to the problematic depiction of black people in this comic, but from what I read, it was actually at the request of the American publishers before Tintin in America was published in the United States, so as not to represent a desegregated society, which is to say they didn't want it to seem that blacks and whites were living next to each other and working next to each other in the United States and requested that they be changed to Caucasian or Hispanic characters. Tintin in America was informed by and written as a sort of critique of the United States, of its materialism, of its increasing mechanization, as well as the treatment of African Americans as well as Native Americans. This is perhaps most potently represented by the takeover sequence of the Blackfeet Indian land where oil has been discovered, where in the course of less than a day they are evicted by force and a city springs up where they used to live. Something preserved completely and equally impactfully in the newer version. Still, there are a lot of areas in which it was actually toned down or dialed back a little. For example, over here you have Tintin just taking the photograph of a Native American, whereas in the original the Native American was not just a beggar but had a sign above him that said, don't forget the poor natives from the government of the United States. This is perhaps most startling in the sequence where the bank assistant's describing to the police what they found. And there is a little bit of a dark joke here in the rewritten version where it says I raised the alarm and we hanged a few fellas right away but the thief got clear but the original actually said I raised the alarm and seven black guys were hanged immediately but the crook got away. This is echoed later when the sheriff is listening to the news summary of the day. Uh, the news broadcast on the radio actually says 44 blacks have been lynched, 150 gallons of carbonated chlorine have been seized. The later version changed that to 44 hobos have been lynched, which is still pretty stark, but not as bad as the original. It also changes the carbonated chlorine to bootlegged whiskey, uh, probably to make more sense because I don't know what the carbonated chlorine's about. There are a couple of similar culturally oriented adjustments that are fun to observe. In the modern version we're all familiar with, when Tintin visits the grind factory, the meat that's been processed in the grind factory is getting mustard, pepper and salt added to it. Originally, it was mustard, garlic, pepper, salt, ginger, and then something else, which was probably considered a little too French or too European for English and American audiences when it was translated. Also in the factory, when the striking workers comment on the factory, they talk about, about how they process dogs and cats and rats to make hair pate, which was changed to the more familiar salami for Anglophone readers. Another interesting change takes place in the sequence where Tintin first goes to hire a horse. 
In the redrawn edition, the horse is introduced as Beatrice, Tintin says hello Beatrice, and then both of them are ejected from the stable, with Tintin saying, I don't fancy the color, I prefer a chestnut, and while we're about it, do you have an even quieter one? The joke over here being that the horse is ill-tempered. In the original, the horse again is introduced as Beatrice, but Tintin says greetings Bucephalus, referring to the horse by the name of Alexander the Great's horse, which is what causes it to lose its temper. And Tintin's request then is for a horse that perhaps can take a joke. There are a number of changes and adjustments uh, throughout this book. One of the major ones is that in the original, Al Capone, who's the only real life figure to ever make an appearance as a character in the Tintin Adventures, appears masked at all times. You never get to see his face. In the rerun edition 10 years later, Al Capone's scarred face appeared in full. As I mentioned earlier, Tintin in America doesn't see a radical adjustment between the original and the redrawn version as far as the panels and the layout are concerned. There is definitely a compression. There are three panels per row instead of two very often, but the number usually remains the same. For example, on this page, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 panels go by between Tintin falling through the trapdoor and being thrown, which remains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in the redrawn version. However, there is an extra panel here waiting for the ripples to subside, an extra panel here where the car heads back to the headquarters, they get chewed out by their boss, and another panel over here where they drive back and walk up to the shore. In the original, although you had the car returning, you didn't have one of them getting there, so you had the second panel after the drop lead straight to being yelled out without the waiting and the driving panels. And you have them appear immediately peering over the side without the approach panel first, as it is in the redrawn edition. My favorite of such pacing adjustments comes during the sequence where Tintin's doing his Jason Bourne stuff, climbs out of his hotel window and into the neighboring room, which even in the original drawing style is very impressive. The redrawn edition of course gives us that same shot and another big panel in which Tintin peers inside and a second panel in which he's looking at him before he appears right next to him. These extra panels like the ones before really help tease out the scene and even though the newer edition is fewer pages this kind of edition shows Hergé incorporating backwards into older works techniques he had mastered since then. A number of the small changes made uh, between editions are just changing of names of characters, making them sound more colorful, more gangster-like, maybe more accurate. And one of the funny name changes uh, happens in this sequence where the detective first brings back the dog that he believes is Snowy. He is obviously hit on the head by the true owner of that dog. And in the original, she says, you stole my little Mirza, referring to her dog. In the redrawn version, the dog's name is Fritzy. However, the one joke that gets lost over here comes in the changes made in a later panel once Tintin has captured both of the grind cop gangsters and in the posters of lost pets behind them, uh, one of them says Poodle Popsy. In the original, it was Mirza. So there you have it, a very quick look at some of the interesting and more noticeable adjustments between the two editions of Tintin in America, one from the original 1932 collection and the other incorporating changes made in the 40s as well as the translation of the 70s. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments and questions below. And as always, thank you for watching.